The National Broadcasting Company presents Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. Tonight, transcribed from Hollywood, another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles. And 50 men who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. From the files of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on fact. Only names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Case for tonight, Conspiracy. It is 2 p.m. the afternoon of October 17th, 1926. Captain Clint Stinson of Texas Ranger Company B is seated in his office. Across the desk from him sits a woman sobbing bitterly. <laughs> they killed him, I tell you. They shot him down in cold blood the way they shoot a dog. <laughs> now, get a grip on yourself, Mrs. Wendell. Oh, help me. Please help me. Ed was a good man. Our baby's only seven months old. Now Ed is dead, and the man who killed him is walking the streets of Crescenta as though nothing happened. Crescenta? Yes, in Ames County. That's where I came from. I see. <laughs> Some pretty funny things have been happening in Ames County. <laughs> who was the man who killed your husband? A man named Ray Thorpe. It happened four days ago. But he wasn't even arrested. The grand jury said that according to the evidence, he killed Ed in self-defense. Any witnesses testified to that? <laughs> yes, three of them. But they were lying. They were lying. My Ed never carried a gun in his life. Are you sure of that? A wife doesn't always know. I knew. Why can't you help me? What kind of a world am I living in? What kind of a world am I bringing my baby up in when his father could be killed without anybody even lifting a hand? <laughs> now, now, just take it easy, Mrs. Wendell, please. Yes, Captain. Get me a sheriff porch at Crescenta in Ames County. What are you calling him for? I want to help you, Mrs. Wendell, if there's anything that calls for help. You won't get the truth, Miss Sheriff Porch. You said yourself that funny things are happening in Ames County. Funny things are liable to happen in any county where there's a big oil strike. <laughs> Drifters and floaters crowd in. You can't always condemn a sheriff for what happens. <laughs> you mean it's just too bad if a man gets murdered? I didn't say that, ma'am. Yes? Sheriff Porch, Captain. Go ahead. Hello? Hello, Captain Stinson. How are you? Fine, Sheriff. I'd like a little information. Sure thing. What about? man named Ed Wendell, shot and killed in Crescenta by a man called Ray Thorpe. Well, ain't much I can tell you, Captain. Thorpe killed Wendell in self-defense. Wendell's always been, well, sort of a hothead, troublemaker. Started a fight with Thorpe and pulled a gun on him. Thorpe had to kill him to save his own hide. I understand there were witnesses. There sure were three of them. And one of the three was my deputy. Open and shut case. I see. Well, thanks, Sheriff. Just checking. Uh, what brought the case to your mind? Uh, you have, uh, some sort of a complaint? Wendell's wife thinks he was murdered in cold blood. Well, Captain, you know women. Can't believe anything wrong about the men, folks. That happens. Thanks, Sheriff. Anytime. Goodbye. Goodbye. You don't have to say anything. I know what he told you. Mrs. Wendell, I'm sorry, but... There's nothing much I can do. He left the house smiling, waving to the baby. And he never came back. And they wouldn't even let me see him again after he was killed. What's that? <laughs> Mrs. Wendell, are you telling me that you never saw your husband's body after he was dead? No, they wouldn't let me. They said it was a law because of the way he got killed. There's no law like that. Are you sure you're telling me the truth? Well, why would I lie to you? You never saw the body. No, I tell you. They buried him in the county cemetery the day after he was killed. Do you know if an autopsy was performed? No, I don't know. I see. Mrs. Wendell, if I can get an order to have your husband's body exhumed, 
Will you give your permission? Yes. Oh, they won't let you do it. They're not going to know it's being done. Yes, Captain? Put out a call for Jace Pearson. Tell him to report to me immediately. And bring Steve Clark in, too. Then get me headquarters at Austin. By late afternoon, Captain Stinson had a magistrate's authorization to exhume the body of Ed Wendell. Later the same night, Texas Rangers Jace Pearson and Steve Clark, accompanied by a medical examiner and Mrs. Wendell, were at the Ames County Cemetery, three miles from the county seat at Crescenta. Box lid is almost clear, Jace. All right, Steve, hold it. See if we can get the top off now. Want to flash that light down here, Doc? Oh, yeah, sure, Jace. Mrs. Wendell. Yes? Maybe you better go wait in the car, ma'am. No, I'm all right. She'll have to identify the body anyhow, Jace. I guess you're right. All right, Steve, let's get the cover off. Right. Yeah, that's got it. Just lift it up over the edge of the hole. Yeah. Uh, the body's completely covered with a sheet. Yeah. We'll lift it out to you. I got this in. All right, lift. Yeah. Uh, uh, I can get a hold now. Yeah, I'll help you. Uh, uh, all right, that does it. Boost me, Jason. I'll pull you up. Right. Uh, all right, now grab my wrist. Got it. Hey, we'll have to replace the cover and shovel the grave in again. We can do that as soon as Mrs. Wendell identifies the body. I hate to ask you like this, ma'am. It's all right. I know he's dead. What can it matter? Uh, Jace, you got a pocket knife? Have to slit this sheet. Yeah, here, Doc. Yeah. Well, Mrs. Wendell? Yes. <laughs> Don't look anymore, ma'am. You better take it to the car, Steve. Come on, ma'am. There's nothing more you can do. <laughs> Just a sheet on him. Didn't even bury him with his clothes. Yeah, it wasn't even embalmed. Yeah, something strange here, Jace. Here, let me roll the body over. Pull that sheet down further. Sure. No marks on the head and the chest. Uh, here. Here's what we're looking for. Yeah. This man was shot, all right. Shot in the back. The medical examiner took the body into the funeral parlor and Steve Clark took Mrs. Wendell home. It was after 2 a.m., but what I had to do couldn't wait. I located the home of the county attorney, Lou Morrison, a ranch about 10 miles out of Crescenta. I got him out of bed. Oh, what's on your mind this time of night, Ranger? Official business. Seems to me you could have waited and come to the courthouse in town in the morning. A few men I'm after might be disappearing from town by morning. I had to wake you up. I need some warrants. Warrants? For somebody in Crescenta? Yeah. The first one for a man named Ray Thorpe. On what charges? The murder of Ed Wendell. Thorpe killed Wendell in self-defense. He's already been exonerated by the grand jury. Look, Mr. Morrison, I've just come from the cemetery. We exhumed Wendell's body. A body can't be exhumed without an order? We had an order. From a magistrate at the other end of the county. And Wendell's body proves Thorpe couldn't have killed him in self-defense because Wendell was shot in the back. That's impossible. Did you see the body before he was buried? No. No, I didn't. But, but there were witnesses. The witnesses lied. Mr. Morrison, I want a murder warrant for Ray Thorpe. All right, Ranger. You seem to have some evidence. I'll go into my office and write him up. You can get Judge Padgett to sign him. Thanks. I don't have to dress. You, uh, said that you... You wanted several warrants. That's right. Three more beside Thorpe's. For who? For the witnesses who claimed that Thorpe shot in self-defense. On what charge? That's a funny question from a county attorney. A charge of perjury before the grand jury. I got the warrants, but Morrison's attitude told me they weren't going to be easy to serve. I'd arranged to meet Steve Clark at an all-night cafe in Crescenta. He was waiting there. Get the warrants? Yeah. Jace, there's something funny about this town. It smells to high heaven. And say that again. There's more to this than just a murder. The county attorney didn't want to cooperate. And one of Thorpe's witnesses is a deputy sheriff. Yeah, it looks like the law is trying to cover Wendell's death. And I think I found out why. Yeah. 
Mrs. Wendell spilled it when I was taking her home. Said that her husband was planning on having some kind of a meeting at his house on the night of the day that he was killed. She say what kind of a meeting? Yeah, it's about the county elections coming up next month. What about them? Uh, Sheriff Porch and County Attorney Morrison are both running for re-election, but nobody's running against them. Both unopposed candidates? Yeah, that's why Wendell called a meeting. He didn't like it. He was fixing to stir the town up for a writing vote. How come Mrs. Wendell didn't mention that before? I guess it didn't seem to have any connection with her husband getting killed before. You finished with your coffee? Yeah. Let's get those warrants served. This town's going to get awful hot. Sharp works on a ranch out beyond the oil fields. I'll go out there and pick him up while you... Hit the ground, Steve. Where'd it come from? Caught a flash from the corner across the street. There's something moving in the shadows there. Let him have it. Uh, He's mounted, Jace. He cut through the alley. The field's behind town. Can't get a shot at him now. Come on, let's get our horses out of the trailer. Right. Keep back, everybody. Keep Keep back. back. Come on. Come on, Sharky. Come on. Come on, Lord. Come on. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Ah. There he is, Jace, topping the rise. Not gonna go far. His horse is breaking stride. Looks like he's gone lame. Yeah, must have picked up a stone. We'll have to leave him soon. He's out of sight now. Be careful after we cross the rim. He may run on foot and keep going, or he may drop into cover and try and pick us off. Anyway, he wants to play is all right with me. Hey, here's the top of the rise. Hunch low on your saddle. There's his horse, Jace. No rider. Yeah, he's dismounted. Pull up fast and drop. Whoa, whoa, Charlie. Whoa, long horse. He's in that clump of mesquite. Yeah, I know it. Keep flat. The moon touches the top of that brush beside you. Reach over and nudge it. Draw fire. Right. You get him? I don't know. The skeet seems bent over like there's some weight on part of it. Crawl toward it. Keep your gun ready. Better stay a few feet apart. No sign of movement. We'll know in a minute. I can see a boot sticking out of the mesquite. Must be laying out flat. He's hit all right. We can get up. No more trouble with him, Jason. Right between the eyes. Some shot for hitting a man you couldn't see. I knew he was firing a rifle. He had to be drawn a sight, so I just fired a little above and to the right of the flash. Wonder who he is. We'll find that out later. Better get his horse. We'll have to lead him back. Yeah. Easy, boy. Easy now. Come on, we'll fix where it hurts. Turn him a little, Steve. Let the moon hit this side of his saddle. Yeah, around, boy. What do you see? A couple of letters burned into the leather. Yeah, look like initials. Hey, R.T. Yeah, R.T. I guess we can tear up that warrant for Ray Thorpe. You are listening to Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. We continue now with tonight's case, Conspiracy. An authentic story from the files of the Texas Rangers. It was sunup when we got back to the main street of Crescenta. The town was waking up for the day, and shopkeepers and morning crews headed for work in the oil fields followed us to the funeral home. I was unstrapping Thorpe's body from my saddle when Sheriff Porch came through the crowd. Let me through here, let me through. Well, howdy, Rangers. Howdy. Hello, Sheriff. Uh, see, you got Thorpe all right. About time somebody got him. Yeah, I know. County attorney told me what you found out. Could have knocked me over with a feather. I'll bet. All right, Steve, grab his feet and let's carry him in. Right. Uh, I'll get the door for you. Put him down there. All right. Sure is heavy. He tried to fight it out, huh? Tried to ambush us, you mean. And somebody better explain how he knew we were after him. Reckon you can blame me for that, Ranger. What do you mean by that? County attorney called me right after Judge Padgett signed your warrants for you. I knew where Thorpe was hanging out when the hot spots outside the town. Thought I'd go out and pick him up for you. When I told him you was after him, he sort of caught me off balance in Bolden. Kind of convenient, Sheriff. Especially since you let him out once before. After he'd shot a man in the back. I didn't know that. I never looked at Wendell's body. I, well, I was home, sick. 
My deputy handled the case. Same deputy that said Thorpe shot in self-defense? Yeah, same one, Joe Slade. I got a warrant for him, too. I know. That's why I got him locked up in a jail right now. You're getting mighty cooperative, Sheriff. Well, Slade was right with me when I heard you wanted him. I know my job. I'm trying to help you. How about the other two witnesses Thorpe had? Rollo Kane and Arthur Sampson. I still got warrants for them. You'll find them out in the oil field, I reckon. They got two operating wells and they're drilling a third. Just past the old stockade north of town. You'll need horses. The road's too muddy for a car. I'll ride out with you. Thanks, but we can handle it. You need a rest. You've been working too hard. They're not drilling, Jace. They're just pulling the drill stem out of the hole. Yeah, probably jumped a pin on the bit. Funny thing, Kane and Samson being mixed up in this Wendell killing. You think a couple of oil men with producing wells would be on the side of the law? Something behind this we haven't hit yet, Steve. Man by the tool shed's watching us. Oh, yeah. Doesn't seem to be doing much work. Maybe he's one of our boys. Won't take long to find out. Be able to ask him in a second. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Howdy, Rangers. Howdy. Hello. I'd like to talk to you for a minute. Mind telling your crew to knock off? Sure thing. Hold it, boys. Cut fire. Hey, hey, hey. Ah, what's on your mind? What's your name? Kane. Rollo Kane. Arthur Sampson around? That's him. Up on top of the dirt, greasing the crown chair. What's the matter down there, Rollo? Tell him to come on down. All right. Rangers want you to come down. Uh, uh, send a hook up for me. Uh, just a second. Look, what's this all about? I got warrants for you and your partner. Oh? What for? Perjury before the county grand jury. <laughs> <laughs> you must have the wrong names, Ranger. I never testified for a grand jury. Who are you trying to kid, mister? Records will show whether you did or not, so if you didn't, you got nothing to worry about. Now get your partner down here. All right. All right, boys, send a hook up. Look, you uh, mind if I get my coat? It's right there in the two shed. Go ahead. I can watch you. All right, thanks. Look out, Jake! Oh. Cut that power! Hey, drive clamp spell from the top of the derrick. Yeah, hit right where we were standing. Thanks for the push. Yeah. Hey, you you heard, Rangers? That come close to being a nasty accident. It came close to being nasty, but I don't think it was close to being an accident. What do you mean? You know what I mean, Kane. Pretty convenient time for you to step into that tool shed. Oh, well, I'm just lucky, Ranger. Starting right now, your luck's running out. All right, Samson. You can climb down. I'm sorry that happened, Ranger. I just knocked it off reaching for that hook. If anything else falls from that, Derek, you're going to come with it. Oh, come on now. Climb down. All right, climb down. No. Man can't be too careful if he wants to live, Ranger. These oil fields can be dangerous. There's something else can be dangerous too, Kane. Something you're going to find out about. Yeah? What's that? Breaking the law in the state of Texas. We herded Kane and Samson back to Crescenta and marched them into the jail. All right, boys, step in. Go ahead, now. I'll see you right to the cell. Uh, you know the law, Ranger. You gotta check your guns here in the office if you come inside the cell block gate. Unbuckle them and hang them in the cabinet. All right. I want to talk to your deputy, Joe Slade, anyhow. Steve, you better take care of the horses. Right, well, I'll meet you. Well, we can eat at the cafe in about an hour. Okay, Chase, I'll see you later. All right, Sheriff. Go on, Kane, move. You too, Samson. All right. You know, you're not going to keep us here long, Ranger. We'll see. Your charge won't stand up. Into the tank with Slade. Was wondering when I was going to get company, Sheriff. If I knew you wouldn't let your star deputy die lonesome. Shut up, Joe. Get out of the gateway and let these men in, Slade. For sure, Ranger, sure. Come in, fella. I want to talk to you, Slade. Why, sure... You're Jace Pearson, ain't you? You got a reputation for being pretty good at the gun. I'm still alive. Why did you lie to the grand jury? Me? You got the wrong boy, Ranger. Oh, it's my office phone. You gonna give me the same story I got from your two pals? That's right, Ranger. Same stuff. Sure. Slade never appeared before the grand jury either. It's all your imagination, Ranger. If the three of you have one brain to go around, you'll tell the truth. 
You're not in here without evidence. The grand jury records are being subpoenaed. Listen to the man, fellas. He knows all about the law. You're in for a few surprises, Ranger. A few big surprises. Seeing the three of you sent to Huntsville isn't going to be a surprise to me. A Ranger. Yes, yeah, Sheriff. What? Oh, I see you got a gun, Sheriff. You're not supposed to bring a gun past the cell block gate either. It won't do no harm. You don't make me use it. You see, Ranger? Surprises, like I said. Back away from that cell gate, Ranger. All right. Now you get in there with him. What's the idea? You're under arrest, board or the county attorney. For what? For the murder of Ray Thorpe. The sheriff was showing his colors openly now. He was part and parcel of all that was crooked in Ames County. I was dumped into a cell with three men who would gladly kill me if I gave him the chance. Don't stay off in the corner by yourself, Ranger. That's far enough, Slade. I'm keeping this side of the cell for myself. Don't come past the middle, any of you. Who's going to stop us? Sheriff is gone for the day. Yeah, since I'm in here, thanks to you, there ain't nobody on guard. I didn't come to this town alone, you know. If you're counting on help from that other ranger, don't get too happy about it. Probably somebody breathing down his neck right now, just like we're breathing down yours. Be too bad if you got to brooding about the way you killed Thorpe. Sheriff forgot to take your belt away, you might hang yourself. You got real broken up. Sure. I might even stab myself with this. He's got a knife. Lousy pocket knife. You think you're going to scare three of us with that? No, not three of you. But I'm figuring it's good enough to scare one of you. The one who comes at me first. You better get together and figure out which one of you it's going to be. Because he's the one who's going to get killed before I do. I didn't dare sleep. I had to watch every move they made. There was no sign of Steve Clark. In the morning, the sheriff came in. He took Kane, Samson, and Slade out for the arraignment before the judge. When he came back, he didn't bring him back with him. Here's some food for you. Stop playing, Sheriff. You know I'm not going to eat anything you give me. Suit yourself. You may be here a long time. Longer than most of your prisoners stay. What happened to him? If it's any of your business, Judge Paget released him. No evidence. You call grand jury records no evidence? Seems like the grand jury records have been misplaced. I suppose the county attorney took care of that. This town's going to come down around your ears, Sheriff. You can't... What's that? Maybe what I've been expecting. What happened to Steve Clark? Well, how, how should I know? You mean you don't know whether your men got him or not? Well, you couldn't have gotten away. Watch your hurry, Sheriff. All right, now, keep your hands away from that gun cabinet, Jerry. Captain Stinson. Jay! I'm all right, Steve. Have you out in a minute, Jace. Take the keys, Steve. You can't let him out. He's my prisoner. We've got a writ for him. And to keep the record straight, Sheriff, you're mine. I don't see Howdy, you. boy. Glad to see you, Steve. I was afraid you caught one in the back. Uh, no, not quite. They tried to take me after I left here, but I got away on Longhorn and outrun them. Had to ride cross country most of the night to get to a phone. Let's go. We got a lot to clean up. Yeah. Captain's got a lot of information on what there is to clean up. Yeah, I sure have. Things that Porch could have told you, Jace. Porch is a rich man, aren't you, Porch? Well, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about bank accounts all over the state. Big, fat accounts belonging to you and to County Attorney Morrison and Judge Paget. I've been checking on you for two days. You can't prove nothing wrong about that. Yes, we can, Sheriff. We've just come from the courthouse. Your friends didn't have time to burn all the records. You're getting a little pale, Sheriff. It was just business, that's all. Nice business. You and others like you forming a combine to rob the people of this county. We can convict you on 50 conspiracy counts, along with complicity in Wendell's murder. But killing Wendell wasn't my idea. Morrison ordered it when Wendell started to raise a fuss about the administration. That's all I wanted to hear. Jace, you and Steve go after Morrison. He's not in town. Must be at his ranch. What about the others? Well, we had a shooting match with Samson and Kane as we left the courthouse. They were making a run in the car. Some of our boys took him to the hospital for patching up. Uh, how about Joe Slade? No trace of him, but I got a hunch we'll find him with Morrison. Morrison's accounts show Slade's on his payroll. Probably burning more papers out at the ranch. Let's go. <laughs> On the ride to County Attorney Morrison's ranch, Steve Clark gave me the inside on the gigantic racket that had been working in Ames County. Yeah, Jace, Captain dug it all up. When the oil strike came, Morrison's crowd bought up county land at auction, but no auctions were actually held. 
course, Morrison and his pals didn't take the land in their own names. They turned it over to men like Kane and Samson. Strong on boys who'd give them a kickback. But there uh, must have been some of the townsmen known what was going on. Uh, sure they did, but they were scared stiff. Didn't always take force to do it either. How can you fight a crook when he's in control of the law you had to fight him with? A couple of men who wanted to run for office were beaten out of the idea. That's why Morrison and Porch had no opposition. There's Morrison's ranch up ahead. Yeah, I see it. Hey, Jace, look. There's a car coming down the ranch road. Really raising dust, too. Step on it. Block them off the intersection before they get on this highway. We'll beat them to it, all right. Hey, they spotted us. Car's turning. And we're almost the ranch road. Keep low. You get cut, Jace? No. Get their tires when I turn in after them. Yeah. Good shot. Hey, they turn turtle. Come on. Out. Look out, Steve. That slave breaking for the trees. I'll get him. You dig Morrison out of the wreck. Right. You miss, Slade. I won't miss again. You're going to have to step out and take better aim than that. I got Morrison, Jace. You up, Slade. We'll lick. You better listen to him, Slade. Huh? All right, Ranger. Guess it'd be crazy to shoot it out. I'm coming. I'm dropping my gun. Both hands up. Get that arm from behind your back. I can't. I hurt my arm and my back when the car turns. Watch him, Jake! Oh! Come on, Morrison. Ah, still had one rattlesnake trick left, didn't he? Yeah. His last one. We'll send somebody out for his body. All right, Morrison, let's get back to town. My company should have all your friends rounded up by now, including that phony grand jury you stacked. You won't keep us long. I wouldn't bet on that, Morrison. You won't be handling the prosecution this time, and the judge won't be one of your partners. Get moving, mister. You've got a long way to go. The Ames County conspiracy was smashed, and 12 key men were convicted and sentenced to jail terms ranging from 10 to 50 years. Since then, Ames County has become a model American community. And now, here again is the star of our show, Joel McRae. Texans are mighty proud of their state, and the story that best illustrates that pride has made the rounds for many years. It was started by an old Texas ranger whose son was going off to war. In parting, the ranger gave him this advice. Son, you're going to be with fellas from all over the world. There's one thing you must never do. Never ask a man where he's from. If he's from Texas, he'll tell you. And if he isn't, don't embarrass him by asking. Good night, folks. See you next week. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Joel McRae is currently seen starring in the Universal International Technicolor production, Frenchie. Tonight's cast included Tony Barrett, Lillian Vaya, Herb Ellis, Ken Christie, Byron Kane, Tom McKee, Lamont Johnson, and Herb Vigran. This story was transcribed and adapted by Joel Mercott, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. Hal Gibney speaking. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Tomorrow evening, Gordon McRae sings for you as the Railroad Hour presents a melodic adaptation of One Touch of Venus. Gordon's guest for tomorrow's Railroad Hour production is Ginny Sims. The Telephone Hour tomorrow brings you celebrated contralto Marian Anderson as featured artist. Miss Anderson will offer a group of spirituals and operatic selections accompanied by Donald Voorhees and the orchestra. Phil Baker asks the $64 question next on NBC.